Look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your strife. I mean the bare necessities of Mother Nature's rest. Well, welcome back to our next episode of The Traveling John's Bear. Um, I'm here with Connie at Bottom Theater. Um, just, it was been fun. The bear has been getting to know the theater and making his way around the concession stand and, and finding a little mischief in the theater room itself. So Bear is having a lot of fun and so we had to um, put him back in his box and where he will be sitting here all week at Bottom Theater. So Connie, why don't you just share a little bit about the history of Bottom Theater and, and your role here. Well, Bottom Theater uh, has been here since 1920. Its first show was uh, April 20th of 1920 with uh, Mary Pickford and Daddy Long Lakes. Um, it's the upstairs has been a continuous theater since then. Originally, the downstairs in the 40s and 50s was a bowling alley. It became a youth center when they put in the inside stairs. And then two theaters, smaller theaters, were put in in the early 90s. Um, we closed the first time for Thanksgiving after we bought the business in 2000 and found out that Thanksgiving is a family movie day. Um, basically, so they can get rid of the kids is what they said. So we have not been closed a day since then, even with blizzards. With blizzards, if the staff works, lives out of town, I just basically come in and man it myself. And believe it or not, occasionally we do get customers during blizzards. It's, it's cool to hear some of the, just the, the, so much tradition, so much history, even that, you know, the story of realizing, oh, we can't close for Thanksgiving. And, uh, that, I mean, that to me is fun, small town, feel. How, why is it important to you that Sauk Prairie has a theater um, and always you know, has a theater in town? Well, I think it provides entertainment for our youth and our, especially our children, teens, parents with small family. Uh, otherwise, they can run amok. <laughs> yeah. And do you have any idea how many movies has, different movies have played over since 1920? Is there any record of that? There is no record of that, but we do, on average, change a movie every uh, week. We have three theaters, mostly stay two to three weeks. Some stay up to six or seven weeks. So we get at least 52, if not probably about 55 new movies in per year. So if you want to calculate that out, but I honestly don't know. There is no history of the 20s. Um, I believe they were probably only open on the weekends. Uh, they did have, that was one of the big things in 1920, is that they did have air conditioning. And so that was a big pull for the farmers, especially like on the weekends when it was really hot or something like that, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sh as, as we all are, are aware, technology has changed since 1920 over the last 100 plus years. Um, would you describe a little bit of any of the technology changes that you've been a part of for the film? Well, we were on film when we first bought the theater in, in 2000, and in 2012 we did convert to digital. The digital conversion was a quarter of a million dollars, which we thankfully just paid off this last December. Congratulations. Uh, and what was a two-hour film, how what did that, prior to digital, what size, how, how what was the process of running a film on a two-hour movie? Uh, the film was what they call, uh, was on 20 minute reels, so we basically got in a box that um, they had to take out and splice the two films together, or the two, two 20 minute segments, and uh, so a two hour film would be uh, six can uh, six reels, yeah. and so that would take three two cans. Okay. Um, one of our first movies early on was Pearl Harbor, and that one was like uh, pushing three hours long, so we had three cans we got to tote and put together. Is that is that the part of the reason or history for the, the intermissions of movies when the cans had to be switched? Or Actually, my husband worked here as a high school student, and no, they actually had two um, projectors, and oh. there, was, there was a queue on the uh, that was seen in the in the booth that showed little black dots that said start the next projector and it was kind of a countdown and so then they started the next film and if you were good at it the customer never even saw the changeover um, I'm not sure when they went to splicing them together but that was already here when we bought the place okay well, that's fascinating 
Um, anything else you would like us to know about? about this theater? Just that we hope everyone comes as often as they can, meet the heat, <laughs> come on inside when it yeah. rains, that type of thing. It's a cool place to be on a hot yeah. day and a, yep. a beautiful entertainment and a, a wonderful uh, concession area and staff, which is always welcoming when you come in here. Um, so I appreciate having you down the street and just knowing that there's a theater here where right down the street is such a beautiful opportunity for us. So thank you and also uh, thank you for hosting John's Bear. So all, all week long uh, we will be, the bear will be here. Um, and you can check us out on makingservicepersonal.org slash John's Bear. Uh, hashtag John's Bear, hashtag Sock Prairie, hashtag Sock Prairie Gets Hunger. Post the pictures, share the video, um, help get the word out. And all of this again, the, the, the dollars and the awareness is going to raise for the bare necessities of life, uh, for the food for feeding starving children. Um, and so it goes towards the Sock Prairie Gets Hunger Pack event, which is uh, in October every year, the last weekend in October, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, so check us out on our website, get involved, and help us raise awareness. Um, and again, thank you, Connie, for your time. And, and you can uh, come on down, watch a movie, and, and see the bear this week. And make sure you get a selfie and snap it out to your friends that you're following the bear uh, this summer long. So thank you. Thank you. Wherever I roam, I could be fonder of my big home. The bees are buzzing in the tree to make some honey just for me. You look under the rocks and plants and then take a glance at the fancy ants, then maybe try a few. The bare necessities of life will come to you.